Welcome, I'm Chef Rick, and today we're cooking from my kitchen to yours, and we're gonna do a sausage, sausage and rice stuffed pumpkin. So we've got all our ingredients here. And again, if you've watched before, one of the things I like to do always for safety is put a wet piece of paper towel down underneath our cutting board. That keeps it from sliding around. First thing we're gonna get going is we need to turn our oven on and we need to turn our oven to 450 degrees. So we got that going. The other thing on this, we're gonna use some brown rice today and it's a jasmine brown rice. I like brown rice because it's a little, has a little more texture, a little more bite to it. Uh, we also, you could use white rice, you could use quinoa, you could use millet, just any kind of grain. So we're gonna toast this a little bit to give it a little more nutty flavor. So we put a little oil in the pan. We're gonna get the fire going and we're just gonna toast it a little bit just to get it started. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Let that heat up and start, you can hear it start to snap, crackle and pop. While we're doing that, we've got the oven, like I said, the oven warming. We're gonna cut into our pumpkin. And I've got a little, just a small paring knife. It's got a little serrated edge. And this is something you want to be pretty careful with. And I usually do a, trying not to uh, stab myself. And you might have a, actual pumpkin tool. This is a pie pumpkin, about a two pounds, slightly over. Okay, we got that done. And now we're gonna take this top off. And you can see all the seeds and everything in there. And we need to take those out. So I've got a bowl to put those in. And I've got a little Parisian scoop. I like a Parisian scoop, or you can use a spoon. Uh, but the reason I like this, this has sort of a cutting edge on it, or you might know it as a melon baller. And we're going to just scrape off the seeds. We're going to save these seeds. If you want to um, save them, and then you, you can toast them and use them as pumpkin seeds. We're making a bunch of noise here. I think we're going to have to fix that. Okay, and then we've got, we've got most of the seeds out of this. The under the lid, you want to scrape the stringy stuff off because you don't want that. And we're just getting ready. We're waiting for our, our rice to start sizzling. And I just take this, cut around it a little bit, start loosening the seeds up. You want to be careful that you don't go through the side of the pumpkin because it's very easy to do if you with an in, implement like this. Like I said, or you can use a spoon. But I'm just going around scraping it all loose and eventually, it doesn't take too long, get them all scraped out and all the connective strings, get those out. That's why I like this Parisian scoop because it has a sharp edge and it sort of cuts. So one more scoop, one more there, about there. Okay, there we go on that. That's how that pumpkin will look, and you just want to set that aside for right now. Put the lid back on it. We're going to stuff that. We can set these off to the side. And I hear the rice starting to toast. It's starting to snap a little bit. You can hear that. Just let it toast a little bit more. And in case you can't get a pie pumpkin, because they are seasonal. You can use any winter squash that you want. Butternut, buttercup, acorn, and stuff those. Or you, if you wanted to, you could even use this to stuff in a bell pepper. Now, some of you that uh, aren't familiar with the term I use, winter squash. Okay. I'll get back to that in just a minute. This is nice, starting to toast a little bit see that just a, just a little bit of toast toasting that's going to give it a little more flavor depth and be a little toasty when you nutty flavored when we, we get the finished product so I've got my water measured out 
I'm going to turn my heat down, add my water. Okay, and give it a quick stir. And then turn the heat back up, let it come up to a boil, and I'm going to cover it. I'm going to let it cook till it's done. Now we want to have the grains broken open. Uh, brown rice will take a little longer than white rice. So as soon as that comes up to a simmer, we're going to go ahead and put a cover on it, let it cook until it's done and all the water's gone. Um, coming back to the pumpkin, this is a pumpkin squash, a pie squash. Or you could use, like I said, a buttercup, butternut, acorn, any of the winter squash. Winter squash are ones that are going to winter over, unlike the summer squash, which would be zucchini, whether it's uh, or the yellow squash, the crookneck squash, they've got a lot more moisture. They will not last through the winter because of the moisture content. These are lower mo moisture content. And these, if you're up north or something like the pilgrims and that kind of thing, what they would do, they would harvest these, put them in their cold storage down in the ground to keep them cool and dry just so it's not real wet or anything. And then they would last all winter long so they could have pumpkins. And it's a good source of of nutrition so but that's what a winter squash is there's something called a Hubbard squash which is like it could be like 50 pounds I mean it's huge absolutely huge so the next thing we want to do why our rice is as soon as I see it start to simmer we're gonna come back to that and cover it up move this off of here we're gonna get our onion now when I do an onion I like to take the root end off Okay, take the stem, em, stem, stem end off, okay, and then just peel it. Sometimes, depending on how thick the, the and dry the onion is around it, it'll come off really easy or it doesn't come off that easy when they're thinner and not as dry. If that happens, this one's coming off pretty good. Or another way to, is just split it like that and do one onion peel. Okay, let me move this stuff over to my little tray here. That can go out in the compost pile, or if you've got a stock pot that you're going to do, put that in. It'll give it some color also. So, we've got the root end here. Boy, I need a bushel basket today. And that's where it grows from. So we're going to put that down, cut it in half. And then we're going to dice this up is what we want to do. So uh, it's starting to boil. Let me put the lid on over here. And I'm going to turn that down because I don't want it to boil over. And let that cook. And we're cutting from the growth end almost to the root end that way it all stays together so it doesn't come apart turn at a quarter turn and if you want a bigger bigger dice or coarser just don't make so many small cuts when I get down to this little end I just cut that up give it a quarter turn chop that up okay So there we've got some nice diced onion again. Just slices, not all the way through. And you need a, you do this relatively quickly. You don't want any meat in it, any of your meat. Again, slice down. And you can do as small or larger dice as you want. And when I get all the way down where it's unstable, Chop it up just like that, okay? I'm gonna take this. Oh, there's a piece that stuck on there. We'll get that cut up. And before we put this in the pan, we're gonna go over and put um, our sausage in the pan. And we've got some Italian hot sausage. You can use um, sweet sausage. We're gonna turn it on. There we go. And how this is gonna work, these casings, I just do in the center of it, squeeze it out, 
So I twist it and then just sort of like, uh, well, if you were a farm kid, it'd be like milking a cow. So you don't, you don't want the casing. Or you can buy Italian sausage in the store also in bulk. You don't have to buy it in links. They just ha didn't happen to have any bulk the other day when I went in. And again, there we go. And we need about a half a pound of this. So turn the casing so it's easier to squeeze out of the casing. Or like I said, you can get it in bulk, then you wouldn't have to do this. Okay. Let me come back. Let me go over and wash my hands. So, but thank you again for joining us today. I appreciate that. This is a dish that you could uh, prep ahead of time and then put in the oven in the morning if you wanted to. The only thing you need to do is adjust the time a little bit because when it's cold it's gonna you can use it for a centerpiece we need to do the sausage up a little bit we're gonna cook everything right in the same pan just chop that up a little bit get it broken up and render some of the fat out of it then we'll add our onions and mushrooms and garlic and our thyme, and salt, and all the other things. One trick to this when you're doing this, when you're doing ground meat, if you add a little bit of water to it, you can mush it up and it'll break up a little easier for you. And then just let that reduce until you the water is gone. It makes it a little easier for you to, to break up into smaller pieces. This doesn't seem like it has a lot of fat in it, so we're going to add a little bit of oil to it because oil is a carrier of the flavor. And got that in. We might need to drain it off, but we might not. We'll just see what it's like when we get this all ready to go. You can do it with Italian sausage. We've got a hot Italian sausage today but you can do it with mild. You can do smoked turkey, any kind of meat. Chorizo uh, for a little different flavor. Just change some of the ingredients on it, get a little creative. And it looks like that's good. Now we're gonna get over here and add our onions to it. And then we'll get all those in and let that cook for a little while until those get nice and translucent and soft. Give that a stir when we get we're ready. Now we've got some mushrooms that we're going to slice up here in a minute, and we've already cleaned those. And I don't wash those; I just wipe them dry because the mushrooms will absorb a lot of water if you wash them. So turn our fire down a little bit here, so that just sort of starts to slowly saute and sweat the moisture out of those onions. Just give it a nice stir. Plus the other thing, we don't want it to burn or anything while we're taking care of our mushrooms. Mushrooms, we're just gonna cut them in half. These are nice sized mushrooms and then lay it flat side down and just slice it. And do that with all of them. Some of them, if they're a small mushroom, you might not need to cut it in half you might just be able to slice it whole. Or if they're a really large mushroom, you're gonna wanna go ahead and maybe quarter that so you have smaller pieces. The thing that you wanna remember doing is to keep things bite size. So somebody can get them on a fork and get them in their mouth. And um, it just makes a lot neater and easier consuming the dish. But these slice really quick and easy. And we've got a few, but um, they keep for a while in the refrigerator. So just keep, we just keep cutting away. 
And when we get all these cut, we've just got a few more to do, we'll add those to our pan. And if you're so inclined, you can get the mushroom kits. You can try growing some of your own mushrooms. There's just lots of lots of varieties of mushrooms that you can choose from. I was in the store the other day, and I think I counted 12 different fresh varieties of mushrooms. So you can do uh, mushroom stroganoff. So there we go. Got those all sliced. Give our pan a little stir. Starting to get aromatic. Get that in there. Just keep giving a stir. If you're, there's any of the the uh, dark, uh, what's called fawn on the bottom of the pan where it browns a little more, stir that up because that's flavor. That actually is the sh natural sugars out of whatever it is that you're sauteing in the pan. So you want to get those incorporated because they've got a lot of good, good, nice flavor in there. But, uh, but just give it, give it a good stir. And then we'll get ready to add the, the mushrooms. Get these mushrooms and get those over to the pan. Gonna need a little dish to put the spoon on so uh, you don't get the counter all dirty and everything. I always like to do that. You don't want to leave the spoon in the pan while it's on the fire because you're going to either burn the handle or you're going to get it really hot and burn yourself. So just scrape these mushrooms in and let those get in there and then we'll stir those up and spread them around a little bit. All those wonderful good flavor. And there we go. So now we're going to turn the fire up a little bit because uh, the mushrooms have got some more moisture in them and we want to get that moisture evaporated out, get these sauteed. They're going to sweat a little bit and get these ready. So this will take just a little bit. If there's some pieces that are a little bit larger, you can just use your spoon and sort of break them up a little bit. But we slice them thin enough so you're not really going to see those on there at all. But um, just cook those and give those a little stir for a little bit. So I always have to uh, stir around. I want to make sure if there's anything that was sticking on the bottom of the pan, make sure you get that stirred up and in there. Now we got our rice all ready to go. We're going to turn that down a little bit to let that finish cooking all the water absorbing that so now the next thing is we're going to do our pumpkin and these onion skins like I might have said before you can use those in a stock pot or that kind of thing we need to add a little garlic to our pan so we're going to mince that up here quickly if you want to, to uh, either mince it up or just slice it thinly or if you want to use crushed garlic you can do that also in the stores there's available in the frozen section some stores a already chopped prepared garlic in little cubes and you wouldn't have to go through any of the, the preparation of chopping or prepping the garlic and then that will keep for quite a while in the freezer and you just need to take it out like a little ice cube tray and drop the piece in. So now we've got that all chopped up, we're going to go ahead and add that and get that stirred in, mixed in so that can cook down and sweat down into the pan and all those flavors can develop in here. And I wish you were here so you could smell it, it just is really smells good, that Italian sausage, that sweet and seasoning. Rinse our hands off here. Before we move on to the next stage, so you don't want to work with wet hands because they're going to be, you'll be able to slip on a knife or hurt yourself. So we're going to dice a little pepper in it. Uh, on this, if you have some of the filling left over, you could always use it in a stuffed pepper. Uh, you want to think about color. The way I like to slice the pepper, lay it down, cut the top off. You got a little lid there. 
pop out the stem real easy. And you can get ready to get that on your cutting board and get that all chopped. You get to clean all the seeds out of there and because you don't want the seeds or any of the white membranes that you need. anything that you can move around take off. Now my pepper, you, I just take my fingers and pull out the seed pot in the center and then you can pull out the other connective membranes and make sure you get all the seeds out of it. I cut it in half, maybe depending on the size of the pepper, sometimes I'll quarter it. And then the easy way to do it, the way I do it, I just slice it in strips. And when you get ready, then turn, as soon as it's, you're finished, turn it in a quarter turn. And then you can have different kinds of dices. So if you want a small dice or you want a large dice. And just continue that through all the, all the peppers. Again, I just turn them on the side, slice them. It's a lot easier to go through the inside of the pepper than to slice through the exterior membrane. Uh, no matter how sharp your knife is, it's just an, e an easier way to slice from the inside out. And again, as we're doing that, we want to make sure there's no um, nothing additional, like the tip of finger or something like that in in the uh, mix, because this is supposed to be Italian sausage. But if you wanted to, if you had some smaller peppers, different color pepper, peppers, you can add those so you get a little mix, or just use red or green, any pepper that you want to use. They're all, they're all good. They all get the same flavor. But uh, And there we got our peppers chopped. Now we just need to do the lid. And we'll do the same thing with that, slice it strips and then turn it quarter turn and mince that. Now these are all ready. We're going to go ahead and add those add those to our peppers and then we'll get that stirred in as soon as we've got those added so everything can cook and sweat down in the pan. So we'll give that a little stir here quick. Get all this stirred in. And you can see what it looks like there. We got mushrooms are all sweated down with the onions and we got the bell pepper and the garlic and Italian sausage. And we're not gonna have to drain any of the uh, fat out because there's this wasn't that fatty. So we'll just give that a good good stir around and then we need to add a little bit of thyme to it and if you choose you can use fresh thyme or the leaf thyme. I a lot of times like to use fresh thyme when I'm putting it in a soup or something like that and I just put in the whole stem and then I take the stem out when I'm done cooking at the end. So, but again, give that a little stir in there. Make sure it all mix up, nothing sticking in the bottom. Or if there is anything, make sure we get it scraped up and around. But it just break up some of the larger pieces of the sausage a little bit there. And give it a nice, nice stir. But it just can't describe them. I wish you'd be able to, s to smell that. And we've got some rice and we've used a, a jasmine rice and we prepared that. Looks like it needs maybe just a little bit more water to uh, finish cooking so we'll add a little bit water to it. We do not want to stir that because if you would use a spoon to stir it you're going to get all 
gummy and pasty and uh, don't want to do that. If you have to stir it, use a fork to fluff it at the end. So now we're going to get it uh, ready to do our next step in this. And we're going to chop a little parsley. Um, a little trick with the, with the parsley is you can get a, a canning jar or old mayonnaise jar you have the glass one, wash it with a metal lid, take the liner out, or you can use like this pint jar, canning jar that we've got here, and then nice and clean jar, and you're going to want to poke some holes in the lid. You can use a knife, or you can use a metal skewer, or a, tooth, or a uh, screwdriver, or something, and then when you wash it, just dip your parsley, leave the band on the parsley, just dip it, dunk it in some water, shake it around. And I used to do this, and because we would get parsley in and people would have time to do things, take your little stems off of the uh, parsley so you just have the nice green end, and you can pack that in there tight, put the lid on it, and make sure you've got the holes punched in it, and put, put it on tight, and then when you get ready, set it upside down on a little tray because there's going to be water draining out of it. Put it in the refrigerator. That will last you for six weeks or more. That way when you buy parsley, you're not going to use it all at one time. You can save it and then it lasts. Just, you'll be amazed how long it will last. Like I said, it'll be, it can last you six weeks in there. You might need to go in and you know every so often go through it and pick out any bad pieces. Make sure it's not standing in water. Make sure the water's draining off of it. Give our sausage mix a little stir here. And make sure nothing's sticking again. And I think that's done. We'll turn the fire off. And then we're gonna go see what it looks like here. And you can see the mushrooms and the onions and the bell pepper. See that bit of red in there? So we got some nice color with that. Okay. And put it in our mixing bowl because we're going to need the space. We're not able to put the, the rice in there. And scrape it all out. Get everything out of the corners and all that goodness. Set our pan off the side here. Uh, just I wish I had a crew like they have on that camera crews they have lots of people that do things give it a little stir we need to let that cool off just a little bit because we still got some eggs to add to it and we don't want to scramble the eggs while we're doing that salt and pepper to taste I always have a tendency to under salt things a little bit because you can always add more salt at the table but you can never take it out so you just need to be aware of the combinations that you're putting into something, something that's got a lot of salt in it. Uh, you want to think about adding more salt to it. And there we go. Now we get this a little stir to make sure everything's well incorporated a little bit. And we do want to make sure this cools off just a little bit. So we have our eggs and our Parmesan cheese to put in here yet, and our parsley. But we're just letting that cool from the stove a little bit. Because like I said, we don't want to uh, scramble eggs, and we don't want to melt all our cheese. And the rice is almost done, looks like. See the steam coming from it. We'll turn that off. check the rice. Again, we're going to use a fork in it because you don't want to use a spoon. So you don't want to make it all gummy. You'll just come out with a rice ball. So when you're doing the, the rice, just take a fork and if you have like a kitchen fork, two-tined or a three-tined fork, that works all the better. But just gently fluff it, scraping from the edges into the center of the pan so we can fluff that up. See what that looks like. 
see how it's all separate grains and that's because one reason is because one it's not overcooked and two we're not using a spoon to, to stir that so but that looks like that's pretty well done we'll just give that a few minutes let it steam a little bit and let the water absorb into it and we're get moving on to our next step here we'll be right back okay we're back our rice is done now what's really best to do if you do this is cook your rice the day before so it's cold because you don't want this too hot otherwise when you put the eggs in it it's going to scramble it so we need a little um, parsley and how I do the parsley everybody well, sometimes you're so people are so gentle with it it's like you're gonna chop it up so I just leave it in the bunch that I've washed take a knife and just take itsy bitsy cuts and we want about a quarter cup okay the other thing you can do when you have um, if you've done this and it's freshly washed one way to get the water because it's going to stick together you can see this doesn't stick together it's because I washed it and let it dry but if you freshly washed it and chop it when it's freshly washed take a like a terry or uh, a cotton kitchen cloth thin put this or a piece of couple pieces of paper towel put them in it put this in there and then just twist it and you can twist all this water out of it and then it'll be just as nice as can be so we're going to put that in there get my knife to get it all scraped up but you don't have to be all gentle with it when you're cutting just bunch it up and mince it up that will work okay now the other thing we've got to have is a couple eggs so we're going to put those in our little dish and we're going to lightly beat those Okay, there's that. I found these little whisks someplace in the food section, grocery store, and I like them for this kind of thing. They work great for just you know doing a couple of eggs in the morning, scrambling them up, and whipping them up, or just when you're cooking something like this. Okay, so we're gonna move that over here, and we've got our. Italian sausage mix with the mushrooms and the peppers and the uh, uh, parsley and the seasonings and everything in here. And we've got a rice. Now, if you have more than you need, and it depends on, you can always do an, another pumpkin or you can put it in a bell, bell pepper or just put it in a casserole dish and cook it. It is some okay. freshly grated stir with some cheese. cheese. Now, I don't like to use the Parmesan that's been on the store shelf. I want some that doesn't have the flavor that the freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano has. So you're going to stir that all in. It's going to be in there. So we got this all mixed up. Okay. And we've got our pie pumpkin here that we've that we have uh, cleaned out and we're going to start spooning this in there and you can do it bigger you wouldn't want to do too much bigger of a pumpkin because what's going to happen when this is cooking it's going to get all don't want to fill it too full so we've got our oven at 400 degrees and we're going to cook with the top on it's fine I always I never could find the right way to get the lid back on so it fit right but we've got our oven set at 400 degrees and we're going to put it in there for 30 minutes and then we're going to turn the oven down to 350 and let it cook for another 25 to 30 minutes until when you take a paring knife and poke into the uh, flesh 
it goes in and comes out easily or use a thermometer and it should the interior the center the thickest part should read about 160. So we're going to stick this in the oven and let that go. And again the higher temperature for about 30 minutes and then we're going to turn it down and let it go for another 25 to 30. So we'll be back in a short time as soon as those are ready and we'll serve them up and you can see the finished product. This is the, the squash that's stuffed with a Italian sausage and rice and we'll dish it up for you. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back. We're ready to take the sausage and rice stuffed pumpkin out of the oven. Say that three times real fast. Okay, we've baked this. We turned it down after 30 minutes. And now we're ready to pull it out. You see that looks pretty. Let's do that. Shut the door. Let's turn it off. Okay, now we've got a serving platter. Now what you want to do with these is um, we'll check the temperature on them. Okay, and I've got a, a nice little thermometer and we'll check it in and I can tell that it's pierces the flesh of the pumpkin really, really easy. And we want to have these at 160 degrees. And it's climbing up. And we're going to hit the 160 without any problem. I don't know if you can see that, but that's 160 plus. So that's good. Now to serve this, we're going to put these on our serving dish. Ooh. Hot, hot. These have natural sugars in them, so you're going to get some exuding. This is all, if you would let that um, taste that when it's cool, it's going to be sweet. So we'll get this out of the way. Now we're, we're not going to serve these up yet. We're just going to, I'm just going to show you how you might want to plate them. Now we did a couple different ones also. You can take the top off. Set it by the side. And here's the one that you saw me do. And we're going to take some Parmesan cheese, put on the top. Let these rest for a little while, you know, five or ten minutes, because they're really, really, really hot. And then you can slice them, and everybody can get a wedge of pumpkin and the sausage and the rice stuffing. Now, just as a variation on these, this is the one we did that had the Italian sausage. I did another one that I did a vegetable protein and more of an Indian theme with it, and we did some paneer in it, which is an Indian cheese. And then we did a one with chorizo. It's more of a Mexican theme. So you can vary it, and we did one with millet. We did one with... Um, couscous we did this one with brown jasmine rice so here we are you can serve this up and enjoy just put it out the table like that if you want to put some more greenery around it or some more color but it makes a nice fall holiday dish and again from my kitchen to yours <laughs>